In 1880, a book was published called The Art of Money Getting. Though distinctly of its time, it was in many ways a precursor of modern self-help books, broken down into 20 golden rules of making and maintaining wealth, basic rules like avoid debt, and guard your reputation. Emerging in America's Gilded Age, it became quite influential, but almost no one today has even heard of it, let alone read it. The author of that book, P.T. Barnum. Barnum is remembered largely as little more than a showman, who built a personal fortune on cheap hoaxes, and exploiting vulnerable performers. But as always, the true story is much more complex. This is that story. The story of a man who built a financial empire on sideshow attractions, lost it, and made it back again. Phineas Taylor Barnum. One of five siblings, he was born in Connecticut in 1810. His father an innkeeper, they were not a rich family, but had more than most. Yet Barnum only received a basic education, instead learning from his grandfather, who taught him how to run a lottery scheme. As an adult, he attempted all kinds of business venture, running a regular lottery, opening a store, even founding his own newspaper. For a while, all was going well, but in 1834, the lottery was banned in his home state, and his other businesses suddenly failed. In a matter of months, he'd gone from a local success story to a complete loser. Barnum was desperate, so he did what desperate people do. He went into show business, but he did so in a very unusual way, buying a slave called Joyce Heff. Heff was very old. In fact, she claimed to be 161, and to have once been owned by George Washington. Now that was clearly a lie, she was really around 80, but Barnum didn't care, he knew a good story when he saw it. Buying her was a big risk, he took out a loan to do so, but it paid off. People came from all over to see the 161 year old woman, and Barnum put her on show every opportunity he got. For seven months they travelled around, half telling stories of when George Washington was young, and of life in the 1600s. She made Barnum over a thousand dollars a week, which in the 1830s was a gigantic sum. When she died the next year, he even sold tickets to see her autopsy take place live. So that whole thing was very weird, but it was the start of Barnum's lifelong love of showmanship, and showed he could make good money through it. He spent years promoting all kinds of exhibits, jugglers, magicians, exotic animals, midgets, anything or anyone that could draw the crowd. Then in 1841, he bought an old museum, renaming it Barnum's American Museum. He realized the word museum brought with it a legitimacy that the word sideshow simply did not. But make no mistake, Barnum's museum was more sideshow than anything else, and he promoted it as such, decorating the exterior to be a giant advert. For 25 cents, you could see some of our world's most bizarre oddities, including human oddities, pinheads, human skeletons, bearded ladies, giants. He believed the best way to guarantee long-term profit was to pack the museum with as many exhibits as possible. Among the most popular were Chang and Ang, the original Siamese twins. But the most notorious was the Fiji mermaid, the corpse of a strange creature native to the waters near Fiji. Word of his monstrous hybrid soon spread, with Barnum plastering its image across the museum. He paid for all kinds of news stories to be written about it, some praising its discovery, others calling it a hoax, as to artificially create maximum controversy. In reality, it was a hoax, created decades before by Japanese fishermen, who fused half a monkey torso to a fish tail. But it paid off. Thousands came to see the Fiji mermaid, often travelling from afar, but somehow it seems to have disappeared. No one knows what happens to the Fiji mermaid. Some believe it was sold to a private collector, others say it was destroyed in a fire. It was 1865, and the fire was so great it put the museum out of business. Countless artifacts were destroyed by the blaze, and many animals burned to death inside. One tiger was able to escape its enclosure and ran out into the street, only to be killed outside by a fireman wielding an axe. It was a suitably bizarre end for such a ridiculous establishment. 
In its 24 years of existence, it was visited by 38 million paying customers, making Barnum rich beyond his wildest dreams. But around this time, he made a series of terrible investments, pushing him into debt. His biggest mistake was to buy 50 acres of land, on which he planned on building a new city. But many involved in the project were basically con men, and it was a complete failure. P.T. Barnum was now a bankrupt laughingstock, and would not be debt free for another 10 years. It was 10 years of misery, but taught him an important lesson, one of the 20 rules of his book, no matter what, avoid debt. Still, Barnum was no fool. He returned to the methods that first made him wealthy, discovering new acts like the giantess Anna Swan, standing 7 feet tall, and the dwarf George Nutt, standing less than 3 feet. Slowly but surely, he regained his wealth and standing, always finding new ways to apply his talent for marketing. Remembering that animals had been the prime attraction of his museum, he went into the circus. Partnering with the ringmaster James Bailey, he founded the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Bailey had founded America's first circus, and now Barnum reinvented it, making it bigger and bolder than ever before. They literally built it as the greatest show on earth. Barnum made use of all he knew about showmanship, promoting the shows in almost every way possible. He even wrote children's books featuring the animals and performers. Their most famous attraction was a giant elephant called Jumbo. It's unclear how big it really was, but they marketed Jumbo as the largest elephant in the world. With dozens of others, they paraded it through the streets publicly. Jumbo became so famous, his name came to be an adjective for very large, and the Barnum and Bailey Circus made millions. P.T. Barnum had regained all he had lost and more, but commercial success wasn't enough to satisfy him. A longtime anti-slavery advocate, he entered politics just a year after the US Civil War. He was elected to the Connecticut legislature, and eventually became the mayor of Bridgeport, at one point, he even considered running for president. The guy was a legend. Into his final years, Barnum helped establish hospitals, institutions and companies, some of which still exist now, until he passed away in 1891, exhausted from a lifetime of intensity.